So Red or Not came out with two different trailers recently. A really good one and a really okay one. But the funny thing is, is that the really good one advertises a map that's really underwhelming for me. While the okay trailer advertises a really good map, in my personal opinion. Still think the best trailer is from Old Gas Station though. Rest in peace, Old Gas Station. back at it again with another video today we're going to be talking about a update that just came out from ready or not uh it's not necessarily a game update uh, it's more of a stuff that kind of goes on behind the scenes as far as i can tell I thought that this was an interesting update that i was going to look into although this is technically a newsletter it's not your typical game update newsletter it's more of a what they did to get the mechanics that they have now so uh, let's just go ahead and hop into it the name of this update is called police advisor introspective briefing number 44 and it starts off by saying attention officers welcome to our 44th edition of our bi-weekly newsletter this week we'll be sharing details from an interview with our police advisor dan this newsletter will focus on dan's background and how he came to work for ready or not as well as some of his major contributions we are very fortunate to have him on the team to make Red or Not as realistic as possible. Police advisor background. Dan has spent 19 years total as a police officer, 15 years on SWAT, split between two different departments and teams. He currently works for a large 54 regional SWAT team, covering small suburban cities and towns in a large metropolitan area in the United States. Along with his duties in SWAT, Dan is an instructor in tactics and firearms at the police academy level. His knowledge and expertise has led him to publishing a peer reviewing articles in SWAT magazine. His inspiration for joining the police force originated due to him misreading a line from the play Our Town when in high school. The misread line, only one life in a thousand is interesting, and recent media focused on the Columbine shooting inspired Dan to make a difference with his life. Dan has been playing SWAT and tactical games since he was a kid. Reciting some of the classic favorites like Rainbow Six and Medal of Honor, outside of video games, Dan describes himself as a historian of SWAT, specifically its early history and tactics. Tactics. His passion for bold led him to become one of Ready or Not's early followers, commentating on Reddit chat forums, filling in the gaps with how SWAT operate in real life. His contribution to Ron's early understanding of how gameplay elements reflect real life operations sparked an email thread between developers and himself, resulting in his position as a police advisor. And we got a close up of a weapon here with ways on how to clean it, it looks like. Although the picture kind of looks like a lock in the background and not this weapon. Interesting. Little cleaning kit there. A close-up of an ambidextrous lower receiver weapon. Cool. Underneath this is another picture of what looks like a climbing tool with a, another Glock. That's probably not an actual climbing tool. It looks more like a, I guess a crowbar. I'm not really sure what this is called. Let's see if it says the name underneath. An expedient breaching tool that is small enough to always be kept in hand. Glock 17 for scale comparison. Okay, cool. The Red or Not team depends on our police advisor for a wide range of things, including SWAT AI, behavior, Behavior, uniforms, weaponry, as well as what a day in the life of an officer actually looks like. Dan's description of how messy a real SWAT office is actually inspired the change of the lobby in the main menu of the game. Dan keeps us updated on new tactics and strategies as they are always changing and look different in police departments across the country. He also helps explain the meaning behind why SWAT officers make the decisions they do and contributes heavily to building a very realistic SWAT AI. Underneath this we got a picture of what looks like uh, the belt that holds all the mags on your belt I guess if somebody can tell me what all this stuff is in the comments you are a freaking amazing person because I'm not entirely sure what all of this is I know this is just a couple of mags here the pistol mags the m4 mag it looks like I think that's the holster right there right it's the bag where you put your mags when you're done with them I think which kind of sucks because they don't have that bag anymore I don't think on the newer model and I'm not sure what this is this kind of looks like a medical bag I'm not too sure but underneath this it says the gun belt setup of a SWAT officer. Yeah, I thought so. It was a gun belt. And another picture here of the body armor. Looks looks like the heavy body armor that's in the game. This is cool. Underneath this it says, a kit worn by an explosive breacher for a training event. Okay, cool. We got another picture. This kind of looks like the backpack that's kind of on your back. I mean, it kind of looks like it. I'm not too sure. I don't know what this is. What the hell? It's like medical stuff, I guess. Underneath this it says, one of the many strip charges used as an explosive for various types of services waiting to be breached. Oh, okay. So this is explosives. 
I guess. Cool. But moving on here. When asked what his favorite part about working with Ready or Not was, Dan stated he loves working with the team and contributing to the game that depicts real horrible events in a respectful way. He enjoys the setup of Los Sunas, stating it is realistic but original and fun to explore. In the future, Dan and the team hope to work together on improving the dynamic nature of SWAT AI. They hope to diversify the decision making of each individual SWAT AI depending on their skill, level, and talent. It is truly a privilege to work with someone who has as much passion as the Ready or Not team in creating realistic SWAT based video games. Underneath this is two different types of SWAT vehicles. This one looks more armored in the background than this one does. I think this is the one that's in the game though. I don't know, it looks slightly different. That's cool. Underneath this it says, a SWAT armored vehicle designed to withstand substantial fire from any angle. Cool, cool, cool. Another picture that's underneath this looks like officers doing room and clearing tactics, if I had to guess. This looks pretty cool, but underneath this it says, officers practicing at a large multi-agency training even at a hospital. Hmm, this kind of reminds me of the hospital of Breaking Bad a little interesting but moving on here this concludes our 44th bi-weekly briefing where we learn more about our police advisor background and contributions be sure to tune in next time for more development news and that pretty much does it for the newsletter there's still some more ready or not news here the steam winter sale for ready or not is going on now from the 22nd through january 5th at 10 p.m pacific kaminsky says attention officer if you've been waiting to pull the trigger finally bring law to the lawless streets of lusunas then now is your chance during the steam winter sale ready or not will be reaching 25% off to celebrate our reaching the finals of the steam awards and our early access anniversary get out there and do your job officer protect and serve void interactive so i mean 25% off it's down to 30 dollars i mean that's like the best price for ready or not right now it's honestly what i feel like the price should have been when they launched it but that's just me but that's not all the news there's still some other news here vote for us better with friends steam awards uh, attention officers thanks to your outpouring support we've managed to make it into the finals of the better with friends category facing up against other well-established titans such as Activision, Warner Brothers, and Capcom, as well as another few independent studios, Red Beat Games. Along with our nomination, we have some words from Void Interactive CEO Julio. Wow, I haven't heard from that guy in a while. Seems like yesterday when we launched Ready or Not, in early access on Steam. But it has been a whole year. The journey has been epic, and our expanding development team continue to be hard at work to deliver the quintessential tactical FPS video game of our era. Today, we got wind that we are a finalist for the category Better with Friends for the annual Steam Awards. Having our indie studios title sitting next to the storied publisher Capcom, Activision, Warner Bros, and Exilot Games is very humbling. Julio R. Void Interactive. With that being said, we once again ask our community for support. Help us bring home the gold. You know what? I didn't vote last time, and that's because the update didn't come out, but since it did come out after this, I think I might just hit them up and be like, yo, you know what? I guess they deserve this one. I have a link to this in my description if you want to go vote for them. But that's pretty much it when it comes to your ready or not news. There are some uh, mini dev vlogs, but I don't think there's really enough to make like a full video on. I might just make some uh, shorts on them, but they're not, they're not even really worth the kind of shorts. It's not gonna lie. But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to ready or not news. What are your guys' thoughts on seeing the behind the scenes version? Let me know what you think down below because I'm gonna get the hell up out of here. If you enjoy the fact that I cover games like ready or not, then be sure to like the video, share the video, comment down below. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on ready or not or any other game that I decide to cover. But with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and just, you know, see you in the next one. Bye bye.